Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Sky Lounge Podcast, episode number 187. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode. Follow me at the Sky Lounge on SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google Music. And also check out at the Sky Lounge on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And without further ado, let's get shit started with episode number 187, Storm in the Brain. A brain storm? Where we are and where we go. Oh, kids, I won't lie to you. I have been feeling really fucking sluggish over the last few days. And, you know, it might stem from the the one day on Saturday where I took the entire day to basically drink. And to add on top of that, I've just been eating real shit food. And when I say shit food, I mean good food. You know, the food that inflates you up like a fat fuck but unfortunately i haven't really compensated that with any sort of working out or physical activity so i sit here before you feeling like a real piece of shit which reminds me i actually do have to go inside the garage and get a workout in there later oh my god isn't it like a hundred fucking degrees in las vegas what the fuck is wrong with you that's the best fucking time to go in there and get a goddamn sweat in all right bitch don't don't try to fucking drag me down to your normie goddamn mindset. But here's the thing, man. Because I need to just shift this focus back into, you know, essentially God mode. I wanted to take an episode to really, you know, assess what this podcast is going through, uh, where we stand now and where I want to go with it. And of course, motherfuckers, everything I'm saying here, I mean, none of it is a guarantee, right? I mean, shit changes all the time and you just have to be able to adapt. I mean, I'm just observing, laying shit out and tinkering with it. Always been like that. And really, I've always um, appreciated that kind of scientific approach where, you know, you're, you're going to have just piles and piles and piles of data and it's just left up to you to figure out what works best for you right at least in terms of like this podcast i mean for me personally that's how i see it but you know i mean everyone has a different approach to one certain thing you know it's not a perfect you know fit fucking system for everybody so you may think this is a very (laughs) inefficient way to go about things but you know, me being kind of a dumbass, this is how I just do things, man. And, you know, specifically with this podcast, you know, there, there's been just kind of a shift in tone, really. And a lot of you are probably thinking and probably saying, you know, this motherfucker in the goddamn MAGA hat right now is turned into a real dick over a 22-day period. The month of June. What the fuck happened? Well... 30 for 30 in 30 has changed this man. And this really does come with the territory when you subject yourself to some horrible truths about people, about the world, and yourself. That, I mean, you got to just kind of take a different approach to doing things where you see this world just completely batshit crazy and you got to kind of combat batshit crazy with batshit crazy, but stick to your fucking rules, right? And my rules have always been, you know, no rape, no murder, no crime, none of that shit. Like, just don't fuck with people. Don't do that. That's fucked up. You're a piece of shit if you do that. I think you're a fucking animal scumbag if you do shit like that. So, in this whole project of 30 for 30 and 30, I'm, you know, Digging deep, you know, taking the red pill, going down the rabbit hole, and just finding these fucking pieces of shit with their fucking tentacles and claws and whatever fucking limbs you want to attach. They got their shit everywhere. And who the fuck am I talking about? Well, specifically the motherfucking global elitists who are the definition of country. I mean, we talked about this plenty of times, uh, remember? The... Ones I've been bitching about for the last few weeks, you know, news companies, corporations, politicians, athletes, celebrities, and other motherfuckers who, I mean, have never met you or no one give a shit about you, but 
will tell you to do exactly what they're saying and feel exactly how they want you to feel. AKA communist kids. That's communism. I mean, someone brilliantly enough is going to say, oh, that's socialism. Look at what's happening in Chaz or Chop, whatever the fuck that thing is, which thank God it's going to get dismantled. A fucking disgusting display of human nature. Chop, okay? But that shit isn't socialism. It's fucking communism, okay? And you know what? I'll say this too. It's basically the same thing, socialism and communism. All right, kids? Like, I know if you just graduated fucking high school or college, the idea of socialism is riveting and promising and beautiful. But guess what? Real life isn't like that shit. Real life is about failing a lot and figuring things out by yourself and with the help of others. But not constantly like this whole communism shit where everybody's equal. Like, no. Fuck. Disparity exists. So that you distinguish the weak and the strong. And yeah, I know there's other fucking subtleties to that shit, but I, you know, I'm just trying to make a point here. Like, don't fucking blame everyone on their goddamn problem and embrace socialism like that's going to fucking solve anything. It never will. Never has. Neither has communism. Ta-da! And this is the kind of dickishness I'm talking about. I just do not care for stupid opinions anymore. And when I say stupid opinions, I generally mean ones that are just echo chamber parrot fucking talk that are based on nothing and emotions alone. Where, you know, me, whether you think it or not, I'm trying to approach it from a very textbook standpoint, you know, from definition to uh, historical context, all that shit. And of course, I'm not 100% accurate, motherfuckers. When, when the fuck am I saying that I'm perfect? I'm not. But... I will do my fucking best to just call shit out now because this is absolutely ridiculous. And yeah, I mean, dickishness is something that culminates from, I believe, for, for me personally, uh, th this whole past few months before that where quarantined, right? I mean, you, you can't fucking leave the goddamn house. You can barely see people. Um, and, and that stasis, that kind of cocooned uh, mode of being, if you will, came the idea for 30 for 30 and 30. And, and this is where this eventual, you know, tone shift kind of started. And really, it shows you where I, I kind of want to take this podcast in a direction uh, that, that's been laid out in the last three weeks or so. Uh, if you have noticed, kids, I mean... If you've been here from the very beginning, you'll know that I was never a big talker of politics. Um, I actually despise politics to a certain extent because of just its... I kind of want to say uselessness, but I understand that there's a lot of fucking things that are involved in the American political system. But yeah, it is essentially useless. Okay. But because of the way the world is right now, I mean, it's so fucking up in your goddamn face that you want to talk about. You have to talk about it. But you might be asking yourself too, like why do it so vehemently? You know, why do it so fucking, you know, harshly and dickishly? Because man, I mean, I, if you keep mincing your words, it's going to get lost in the ether of just people screaming at each other. So you just approach it screaming louder but very purposefully and very calculated and in a way where it's not the norm, but it's kind of like a, I guess a dick slap to the face. <laughs> it's like a fucking dick slap to the face. Like, ah! like yep. But, and that, that's, that's the approach to it right now. I mean, you're, you have to scream at a motherfucker. You have to fucking scream at a motherfucker to get your goddamn point across. And the problem now is, you know, thin-skinned motherfuckers out there, you know, the fucking left wing, if you scream at them, they think you're attacking them. And holy shit, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Boo, boo fucking who? Grow the fuck up. Not everyone's gonna fucking like you, bitch. And that's okay. Because as long as you know yourself and you like yourself, like, there's nothing to fucking fear, bro. Jesus Christ. 
But I get it, man. I mean, this world is so crazy and it's just so full of fear at the moment. You can't help but feel that. You can't help it. And when I see all these chaotic things happening in our world, I feel the need to make some order in my head. And that turns itself into going into attack mode on everybody, like a feral like animal, like <laughs> just barking at everybody. And that just happens when I feel someone's an obstacle, when, when something is an obstacle. I'm not going to fucking care about your feelings. I'm not going to really empathize with you. I'm going to just go and be on my way. I mean, the whole idea is, I mean, it's a car going 100 miles an hour. If you're standing there, you're going to get hit run over. Okay. And I'm not saying fucking com commit vehicular manslaughter, you fucking psychopaths. How many goddamn times I say this? No rape or murder. No crime. None of that shit. Stop it. Stop it, you bitches. Stop that shit. But here's the thing. I know this isn't the most savory approach. It's not. It's not. But it really is how I make sense of things in life. For better or worse. I mean, this is how I actually, you know, figure shit out. I fail a lot. And <laughs> good lord. I mean, I kind of lash out at something I don't understand. Learn about it to the best of my abilities. You know, figure shit out. And then make my mind up after the entire process. And, you know, coming out of that with the you know, decision, so to speak, or the hypothesis or, or thesis, really, two entirely completely different things. But, I mean, they kind of work in tandem because of the way the scientific method just kind of goes in a circle. But sometimes even after that process, I, I, come, I come out completely unscathed, untouched, and without any sort of paradigm shift. But the thing is, you know, whenever I observe things in the world, I mean, this is the general approach I take. And I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, the typical American kids, okay? And when I say kids, I'm talking about that age range between 12 and 30. Oh, you're 28, you're a new kid. Yeah, I know, motherfucker. I'm putting myself in that category too, okay? So chill the fuck out. Like, God damn it. Like, I'm not claiming to be fucking perfect here. How many fucking times do I have to say that shit? But I gotta calm you the I gotta calm you motherfuckers down with all this goddamn you know disclaimer and warnings and shit because you fucking pansies just get up in all this goddamn shit for nothing. So you, know, you dicked up motherfuckers just gotta take that goddamn dick out of your ass, right? But these goddamn kids okay, are so fucking awful and devoid of essential shit like common sense, literacy, decency, and their own thought that they are shitting on the country and has held them together since they were in diapers. <clears throat> These are the same kids complaining about war veterans from, I mean, Jesus Christ, dude, the Middle East, Vietnam, I mean, sometimes... World War II, I mean, if those brave souls are still around, but man, you, know, you, you, you hear the word, you know, euthanasia, right? I'll tell you what, you should put the fucking youths in Asia, specifically Wuhan, China, send all those fucking spoiled ass American kids, maybe, you know what, get those motherfuckers and chop Capitol Hill uh, I don't fucking know what the goddamn acronym is anymore. Oppressive shit. Oppressive pussies, right? You get those choppers and send them all to Wuhan, China, right? Where they're going to probably have to combat the Kung Flu. And yeah, that's going to be some youths in Asia. And ask them after that whole experience in Wuhan, China, how that motherfucker is compared to the fucking United States. Son of a bitch, dude. Like, all I fucking hear is complaining from these kids. These fucking kids who think this country should be giving everything to them for free. Right? Everything should be fucking handed to you because, oh, I'm a victim of something or literally anything. That's not what this country is, kids. That's not what this country is about. And this is the thing, I always wonder why. I always wonder why people think like that. Because as an immigrant of this country for the last 22 years, Americans generally, from what I've seen, I mean, especially with this left-wing garbage nonsense, cancel culture, identity politics, 
fucking garbage, right? You just complain about this goddamn country that is being racist, sexist, oppressive, homophobic. All this fucking word that you can, you know, find in a goddamn thesaurus, or thesaurus.com, right? But the reality is, and, and you know, brace yourself, kids. This is some real truth here. Compared to the majority of countries around the world today, the United States is the most free country to exist on the motherfucking planet. That's just truth. That's just truth. Listen, go to Russia, okay? Or yeah, like I said, youths in Asia, go to Wuhan, China. Try that shit. You fucking morons. You telling me the U.S. sucks? Then fucking leave. Then fucking leave, you bitches. Ah, uh, but it's my right to free speech. It's your right to free speech, but it's also my right to fucking tell you that you're a goddamn dipshit and communism doesn't fucking work because historically it's been proven. And guess what? Economics, math, statistics, literally everything will tell you communism doesn't fucking work. Son of a bitch. I mean, listen, we've all been duped. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to fucking lie. I was part of this goddamn left-wing Bolshevik mob a couple years back. I was. Not literally. I didn't go to the fucking protests and rallies and shit. I'm not a fucking loser. <laughs> I'm not a fucking nerd who goes to a fucking protest, dude, okay? God damn it. It's the American right to protest. All right, dude. Like, if you're going to fucking protest, that exact same time, you could be doing something more productive to solve and quell the problem. But you're out there just with your fucking picket sign. I don't know, like just standing around and looking all cool and trying to hook up motherfuckers. Like, I know what y'all motherfuckers do in that protest. You're just fucking each other and shit. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. But yeah, like I said, man, like that, that entire shit, I mean, y'all been duped. We've been duped. Into thinking that, I mean, and, and, and feeling, this isn't a great country, right? I mean, we've been seriously duped into thinking the United States of America isn't a great country. Like, we're being forced to think that and feel that shit, which is inherently not true. But when this reality of ours is being manipulated, right, and, and manufactured in, uh, to this chaotic fucking primordial like ball of bullshit all right you had to look you have to look at the right enemies you have to look at the right motherfuckers who are ruining this shit for us and it's like i said man it's these evil motherfuckers and the globalists the news corporations the corporate the fucking you know big businesses all all, all those motherfuckers who are doing that blm and you know fucking every everyone can fuck anybody so let's ruin the last of us too. Those motherfuckers, politicians, athletes, you know, dickheads, pretty much, who have never met you, who don't know you, but will fucking force you to think and feel exactly what their doctrine entails. Communism slash cult. Ta-da! Is that too much of a stretch for you guys? Is, is that too much of a fucking high concept for you? If it is, boo-hoo. Go read. Go read a fucking book, okay? You know what? Go ahead and read The Communist Manifesto by Karl Marx and go ahead and read Mein Kampf by Adolf Hitler and go ahead and research some of the histories on communist countries within a 10-year span. Or better yet, I mean, if they're still around, a 20-year span. And see what the data shows you. Children. This is truly a time of chaos. It really is. Everyone doesn't know what the fuck is going on. Just all fucking craziness. But. I can tell you one thing. Within this chaos... I found myself. How weird is that, right? Well, it's not that weird. Because when someone is pushed to the brink of just... Best way to say it really is uh, the brink of just kind of 
giving up um, emotionally on a lot of things. You know, it pushes you to a corner. And when you're in that corner, you find, you know, the bare version of yourself and who you are. And I did find myself. And that's been this whole journey throughout June. And again, it's still an ongoing journey. It will always be an ongoing journey because the, you know, the act of trying to find yourself and, you know, improve yourself is a daily task. It's a daily struggle as well. But it's something that I had to realize um, and just kind of embrace and accept. And that's not always hard to do. It's not. But I felt in the time of chaos, I mean, do, doing that was absolutely necessary. And it's crazy because when you learn more about yourself and learn more about, you know, your family or your, your own, your own, you know, experiences, you begin to start clicking things together. Like, I'll give you a crazy thing. So my full name is Yang Sung Cho. Okay. And there's a Korean slash, you know, Korean Chinese character system called Hanza uh, to, to write my name. And the literal definition of my name is light bridge philosophy. Crazy, right? But I can prove this. I mean, I have the actual name and all this shit from my fucking parents and, and my grandparents. So it's curious. When I asked my mom about the definition, she was saying how it translates to uh, bridge that caps, you know, philosophy through light. Uh, the light uh, philosophy that bridges or bridging light and philosophy. I mean, however fucking way you want to interpret that. But the words are there. Uh, light, bridge, philosophy. And, you know, when I realized um, about myself, you know, with this name and definition and really how it more or less, you know, has kind of carried through my life. I mean, it, it's so weird because I never thought about it, but it, it's, it's really how I've been trying to do things, you know, either if I'm trying to explain something in, in life or trying to dissect it and figure it out. It's, it has just trying to be a, a bridge from philosophy to enlightenment in that sense, light. But that's the thing. I mean, I, I will always be someone who will seek answers and knowledge. I mean, that, that's just something that I find attractive in this world. And, you know, for most people, they don't really want to seek that. And that's fine. That's fine. That's not their priority. That's it's my priority. Because it understandably does come with a cost. I mean, knowledge and, and answers. I mean, they do. They do come with a cost. Time, money, humanity, sanity, empathy, etc. cetera. I mean, we, we call this opportunity cost. But if you feel the opportunity cost is worth it, I mean, if after you weigh the pros and cons, I mean, it's, it's your choice. It is your choice. But the thing too is hoarding this knowledge is not healthy. I mean, it's not a healthy thing to do, just knowing all this shit and just holding it in your fucking brain. That's how you lose your fucking mind, okay? So what I try to do, right, within the process of trying to, you know, be myself, break down shit, um, you know, I try to make what I read and what I find, you know, entertaining and something that I want to talk about. I, I what I do with that is, you know, is try to break it down, package it into something digestible, almost like cooking with raw ingredients. Right? You got all your fucking spices and herbs. You got your shit in terms of fucking meat, veggies. You know, possibly some rice or something. I don't know, but you got to figure out the best fucking way to make a meal out of all that shit. So once that shit is done, I mean, I, I put out, you know, a content like this, you know, whether in video format, audio format, it, it's always something that I want to always kind of fuck with. And, and if you guys don't follow the Instagram page at the sky lounge, uh, I'll tell you what shameless plugging aside. It, it is a, it is a kind of experimental ground where, where I post shit all the time, um, especially memes where 
I like to think I, I create my own memes and it's something of a process that I do every day, but it, it's essentially the same idea of right light bridge and philosophy where you under, you have to try to understand a complex idea and whittle that down into something that everyone couldn't digest in a meme. So yeah, it, it's crazy how that process has worked for like everything that has, you know, been in my life and it just all connected when, when I sat down one day and just thought about shit and man, I, I gotta tell you, man, it's, it's just wild to me where you don't even realize what you're doing until you do it, that kind of thing. But you also realize like there, there have been things already laid out in front of you for you to do it. And I, I know that's a really general and vague way to look at it, but let me read you something. Okay. So two years ago, I wrote this two years ago. Mission statement. The Sky Lounge is an entertainment hub using inappropriate comedy and foul language to share opinions on pop culture, sports, films, music, politics, social issues, etc. Vision. Spread the Sky Lounge brand of comedy worldwide. And I wrote that two years ago in July 2018. And the reason why I had to write that was because there was something... I've been missing with the podcast for years and you can call it a soul kind of, but I don't think I had that motivation of me against the world kind of thing and to the extent that I do now, but you know, call this arrogant or what arrogance or whatnot, but I know my light will go worldwide, but of course, every journey does begin with a step. And I'm still at that what, like baby step of the first or second fucking step of the, I don't know, million fucking staircase, you know, journey to, to wherever. But I just find it that much more invigorating to know that there there is still a long way to go. Right? And, and I don't I don't really know how to explain that at all to somebody who would rather not put in the work but again that's just me this is just me and this is why for me personally i love stories where characters come up from nothing like just absolutely nothing and work their way up and this is where i put in the random anime and manga plug for my hero academia um and, and my favorite character being in that anime is midoriya um deku and his, his his journey is basically that of a i mean they, they already covered this in like season two if i'm not mistaken in the anime but this is the journey of a child who will be the greatest superhero in the world but he has to start from nothing like absolutely nothing and it's just this wonderful journey of a kid who just never gives up and just keeps an open heart open mind willing to learn and I love it. I absolutely love it. And it's not a very typical, I would say, shonen thing because a lot of shonens you have the you know main protagonist already being special or, or deemed the one, but very different with Midoriya and Deku. And yeah, I haven't really caught up with the latest shit, so I don't know how much that narrative might have changed. But 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 but. My point is, I can relate to somebody, you know, who starts from nothing. Not really nothing. I mean, I'm, I'm not a fucking homeless or anything. But but in that sense of, you're a fucking newbie. You you are zero. I mean that that's something that I've grown to really appreciate. Um, which is crazy because yeah, I mean, a couple years ago I would have never said that. And here's the thing, it's never easy to start from the ground level or below, but you, got, you just gotta keep climbing, man. You just gotta keep going. No matter what it is in life. Okay, except rape, murder, or crime. Like, don't, just don't, don't do that shit. Can you fuckers not do that shit, you fucking assholes? Holy shit, man. But listen, I mean, that, all, all of this shit leads us to ask, where do we go from here? I just laid out all this goddamn... <laughs> Uh, thought bubbles of fucking information, but really, where do we go from here? What are we going to do with this podcast? Well, I am genuinely debating whether or not to make this 
a daily podcast. Yeah, I'm really actually thinking about whether or not the Sky Lounge will be a daily podcast, you know, talking about random topics uh, within a 30 minute stretch, you know, all depending on the day, what it is, what I'm feeling. And it's something that I'm really leaning towards. And I, I've been having so much fucking fun over the last 23 days of recording these episodes and just talking about things that I want to talk about. And, you know, faux pas or not, I mean, this is just me. This is exactly what you're going to get. I'm going to do, you know, an episode in one take and I am going to make mistakes. I am going to stutter. I am going to just read from the script at times because sometimes I just don't, I don't know what the fuck I wrote, even though I wrote it literally like an hour or so before that. So yeah, man, it, it, it's... It's just curious that I didn't I didn't fucking in, invest my emotions into this, you know, prior to that, like like I am doing now. But you know, shoulda, coulda, woulda. You just gotta move on with the future and and live with the present, right? And study the past, right? Study the past. And one of the things that I had studied from the past is the fact that I've been saying I need to try to, you know make a website and a website for daily writing is something I'm definitely considering for the near future. And yeah, I've been a lazy cunt about it, but it's something that will be definitely uh, something to look out for and something to really perhaps push this thing to the next level. And I, I, I do believe that. I do believe that. And it might not be the numbers specifically, but it might just be my mentality for, for doing these things. So at this point, it's still all about just churning out content. I mean, that, that's, that's what I've, I love doing. I just love fucking talking and putting out fucking videos and, and audio versions of this podcast or anything on uh, any of the social media shit that I got going on. You know, you already know this kids. I mean, SoundCloud, iTunes, Google music, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, yada, 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 yada. I mean, I'm going to keep making shit because it's, it's, it's fun. <laughs> I mean, there's really not uh, another reason you need to specify to people why you're doing something. Sometimes it's fun. Again, no rape or murder or crime. Like, that, that, stop it. Stop it. Stop it, you fucking assholes. Don't do that shit. Fuck you. But it's weird. It's weird because so many times throughout the year, I mean, throughout the years, years, I made this podcast a second thought. and never actually put my soul into it. But... And I'm I'm tending to do it now, and it, it's not it's not easy, and, it, and nor is it you know something that I, I expect immediate results. I I don't I, I I shouldn't expect immediate results, nor any results for that matter, because I would like to think that I don't have to think about the audience. Just do it right and and get your shit right, and hopefully. Within that visors up mentality, you 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 can sculpt something, and yeah, it, it's a weird way to look at it. A very can I say antisocial? Yeah, kind of <laughs> antisocial way to look at it. But I mean, listen, man, I'm I'm again never going to claim I'm perfect. I'm I'm never going to claim that what I'm doing is the right way nor the efficient way. But I'm going to go about it in a way that I feel is right for me. And if things change, it changes. And I'm always open to different opinions. And you just got to keep an open ear for that shit. But listen, man. With all this rambling aside, I mean, ultimately, I mean, June has been an interesting month so far. And I'm hoping to carry this energy through to the next phase, whatever it may be, whenever that may be. But... It's going to be fun times. It's going to be fucking fun times. So next episode on the Sky Lounge, kids, let's discuss some sports ball. Something that we love to do here on the Sky Lounge. And other bullshit. And we, 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 know, we all know it's going to be bullshit. Right? But such is life. Such is life. All right, motherfuckers. I am seriously still not, like, feeling 100% for whatever fucking reason. So I'm going to figure this shit out. And I appreciate you dropping by this episode. Follow me at the Sky Lounge on SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google Music. And also check out the Sky Lounge on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And without further ado, fuck off. I completely... <laughs>
fucked up the goddamn line for that. Oh, I need a sleep.